Ji. So we have with us Dr. Sankeet. He is ranked to INICT November 2022. Hi everyone, I am very very delighted and I feel extremely happy to have with me none other than Dr. Sankeet. He is a proud Amazonian, a Foundation Bat student and he secured an awesome awesome rank 2 in November INICT exam. So heartiest congratulations Sankeet. It is an awesome performance and I am sure that you do feel on top of the world, yes? So let's let's see what you want to talk about when you saw the result for the first time and did it sink in? And uh, I think yesterday you were on cloud nine and, and it took some time to settle down. Yes, yes ma'am, definitely. It was like, um, I couldn't trust myself to like check the results. I thought I was tracing the horizontal line wrong for some reason. I was like, where are the other zeros that follow the number? What is happening? So yeah. then immediately what happened was I have a senior in Obskani, she's an EGPG. So I, I sent it to her. We had made an agreement that if I get the results, the first person who will be checking it is wow. her. So Srinidhi ma'am, I sent it to her immediately. And then she was like, yaar, tera sach mein aa gaya hai. Then immediately I sent it to my parents. And then I sent it to Divyansh. Divyansh who had gotten the previous yes. INICT rank 2. Yes. So he was like, yaar, tera bhi rank 2 aa gaya. <laughs> And after that, I was like, okay, this actually happened. This happened. And immediately what I did was that you know, I needed an escape. So I had, go, I had planned to go with my friend out somewhere. So then the moment we went out, I asked her also to check. And we were all like, okay, now we'll not talk about this. We'll put my phone on flight mode. Yeah. And we'll just like have fancy food today. So that's so did how. did you enjoy your dinner? Yeah, yeah. Yes. It was like were you able to eat with all the excitement? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. It was like... Um, Everything was on the edge, but I was like, let's just focus on the celebration for now. That's so wonderful. Okay, so I'll, I'll hold it for you. Uh, uh, Sankeet, you know, getting this top-notch rank in a very, very competitive exam for a very prestigious institute and a group of institutes actually now, uh, you know, is not an easy task. Yes. So I want to know a couple of things and primarily on your strategy. Yes. What do you think? are the key ingredients uh, that you probably mix them well and you're able to do well in the exam as well. So what were those things uh, right from the beginning when you started your preparation until now uh, you feel are the reason why you're here? And I feel main thing was the regularity with postings as well as using your notes. Like you have to schedule yourself. I was honestly afraid of the period. If I didn't get it this time, that what would I do when I have the entire day to myself and I have to just read. Yeah. But I really love that sweet balance that you get when you're working a little, you're looking at cases and at the same time you're reading your notes. So that was what I think really helped us that I was diligently attending every posting. Like I used to have like almost a hundred percent attendance track record for everything. Yeah. So I think that's what really helped. Even Vanshika who got ranked seven in this exam, she yes. also um, is a current intern. Yeah. Yes. And she's in batch D with me. So we used to always like read together and like uh, we used to go to quizzes together and stuff. Yes. And we had like mostly the same strategy when it comes to reading. Like we had village first. So we were like, okay, this time it should be subjects khatam hona chahiye, this time it should be hona chahiye, and we had a very like healthy competition going on then. That's wonderful. So two two great things that I think come across. So a lot of people think that it is not possible to get a good rank with internship, whereas I often tell our students that internship is a blessing in disguise. You know, because you're not then fetching more and more material. You're trying to do justice with what you have. You're limiting your content and you're trying to do it in, in, in a format where you can do multiple revisions. So, yes, uh, so please take home that message that it is absolutely possible to secure top ranks with internship. Uh, secondly, he said healthy competition. I think that is very, very essential because we all need some competition. It's, it's to bring our, uh, you know, best versions. Uh, and when you have that in your close proximity, I think it's just the cherry on the cake. So, um, 
very nicely put sankeet now i really want to ask you you said you had a schedule on based on your internship program that you would finish your uh, subjects in this time or this time so you know i often get queries from students as well as i'm sure you would be getting those queries how do you decide that how many days are you going to give for medicine or surgery or major and minor subjects or some medium subjects so maybe a detail on the strategy on how you initially planned your study beta so our final profs got over on december 31st okay. so immediately following that we had the month of jan for ourselves and mid jan mm-hmm. to end jan is where our internship started so in that period of time i was like okay now i have to make a plan so what i thought i'll do is that in the first month i had two subjects to cover just forensics and anatomy i was okay. like i'll start slow and then i'll gradually pick up my pace so in those in those 15 days because first 15 days i took a break of january the next 15 days i finished these two subjects i was like initially slow about it because i tried to do all of my core notes and like make sure that i don't even miss a single point i was not reading it from the purpose of the exam yes. i was trying to finish like question banks of every place and all that stuff and then i realized it's a little bit too much you don't need that much information Agreed. and it's like you don't really need to do that much so then i thought ki okay now let me discuss with vanshika as to what to do next so we were like okay now we have village in the next 3 months in the next 3 yeah. months we have to finish the first two year subjects okay so in 3 months i scheduled anat physio biochem and uh, micro path and pharma so this so was in first two months first month we forensics and anatomy were finished okay. in the remaining next 3 months i finished the first two year subjects and also just to ask you something here when you say finished the subject uh does it mean you were focusing on notes as well as mcq practice uh were you also including pyqs at this time or you kept them for for later on revision what was the strategy and so this time after that 15 days where i spent doing just two subjects i was like okay now even when i'm free if i'm doing only two subjects in 15 days that can't be it so okay. then i discarded the idea of doing question banks altogether i was okay. like okay let me just do i'll start a subject with doing the previous year questions and subsequently i'll do the notes for that subject Perfect. okay so that was just what i did for every subject subsequently and i would bookmark whatever is the important questions and stuff like that i would keep it in a separate place so that i can revise those concepts later but um So I stopped doing like Q banks altogether, and I just focused on doing grant tests. So I had like a schedule that after say around uh, March, okay. then I started doing grant tests on a weekly basis. And okay. whether or not I would get a bad rank, it was immaterial. But I had to do it on every week because I I, I thought that if I don't do this, then I don't have any MCQ exposure. Right. So then I was like, okay, let me do it every week, one grant test. Nothing more than that. Nothing less than that. So uh, I think that is a wonderful, wonderful strategy and. something which is very important that he is highlighted you know when you try and do a lot of things your reading becomes so slow that you start having self doubts are you on the right track or not so i think he realized it pretty soon and uh, that's where he said that this is what is going to be my first priority finishing my notes uh, doing the pyq so that is something again uh, yes we always reinforce that uh, you know uh, especially for i and i said pyq practice is important and he started to try it in the beginning and not really leaving it for the end mm-hmm. and uh, grant test he started at the end of first uh, i mean march. third month right so march he started and uh, also you know uh, you said sankeet that uh, irrespective of what marks you were getting yeah. yes you ensured that you gave the grant test so was it with certain target what was your purpose of giving the grant test was it learning the content from it uh was it just improving your mcq skill was it time management or was it an analysis into your strengths and weaknesses um, i think it's for me it was more about testing how much i know and figuring okay. out how much i need to work in an like a rough sense not in like because what questions they ask in like grant tests are not exactly representative of what you come in the exam so it's more like to see how much your preparation has gotten for like till now i had the target like i should get around like 140 150 questions correct initially but that okay. time in the first few grant tests i got like 120 correct and then i got like 130 correct i was like kind of disheartened ki okay i'm getting so few correct what is going on but the trajectory was very gradual like all the people will say that they got like good stuff like very soon and stuff for me it was very slow so i got my first 150 to 160 range correct well into august like oh, okay. august and september and then subsequently it started improving so it's like it's not a one like one day one wonder kind of situation it's like yeah. a gradual thing so i think again a very very vital piece of information that he is a topper right getting ranked to an ini ct exam and we must be thinking are you know he's like born brilliant and mehnat karne ki bhi zarurat nahi but do you see how much effort 
how much hard work how much planning strategy has gone into it and he also started with a relatively lesser number of correct questions but that didn't sort of stop him from pursuing what he wanted to do and that's the spirit or mindset of a winner that we all need to have i think it is a gradual process you will improve you need to have faith in your abilities yes okay so uh, from march or let's say till march you finished your first and second year subjects uh, then how did you plan further on and then i set another target that now i have april may june and july okay. so in these four months i'm supposed to finish the next whatever subjects are remaining okay so by august start i had finished uh, like one time reading one for time everything reading. and this was my core notes like whatever core notes i had made in my mbbs curriculum that i read in this period okay so after that i started feeling like now i need to finally skim stuff so in the next from august till november was my like only re- reading that uh, like the last minute revision the thing which is the compilation of all the previous year questions and that those topics so no 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 i this is a very important part and i'm getting all excited to know more <laughs> about it so you know uh, this is one place that students often find themselves in a fix right they've done the first reading and they feel it was thorough but but they have a feeling that you know i don't remember anything mm-hmm. yes and i'm sure that feeling does come up with everyone sometime or the other mm-hmm. now when you plan your first revision as we call it uh what was your target was to again go through page 1 to page nth of your notes how did you exactly do the skimming uh is what i really want to know is like um you um for those next few months i had thought ki at least i should do around 2 to 3 revisions for uh, from september october november these 3 months okay so what i did was that from i mean august included because i finished by july end so okay. august september october and half of november so now i have like 3 and a half months i had planned ki one and a half month i'll do one revision and the remaining time i have to do two more revisions if i'm if i'm lucky and i might have to remove some subjects in the last few revisions yes but in the first i thought in one and a half month I'll end up doing a consolidation of whatever important pre topics were there. So then there were like a PDF available where it was just whatever questions has been asked previously, and it's like it can be frustrating at times because in so many topics you know that there are so many more things to it yeah. than what is they've just mentioned. They've just mentioned the disease causative agent, the drug that they used to treat it, but you know that there are so many things in between, yes. and you kind of get frustrated if you don't read it. But yeah. at that point of time, you need to realize that this is all you need to know. and this is all that's important for the exam at this point of time and so you just need to make your notes very concise at that point of time you should not go back to your parent notes because those are like they'll take you forever i remember when i started again in the start of august i picked up biochem and i tried to read my main notes and it took me around 4 to 5 days just to finish one subject so i yeah. was like that is too much i can't afford that much time and that too for a, for biochem which is anyways volatile uh, yeah so i was like okay no you have to do uh, these modules provided by coaching institutes where it's all concise and it's up like just the previous questions all summarized into one thing so the faculty did a really great job of summarizing everything into like a small thing for instance the dvts were really helpful in pharma in obscenity in ofta and that really helped summarize the information into a very brief thing that you can finish in half a day even if you like really put into yes. an effort so then that was really helpful at the last revision I think a very, very, very well-planned uh, study strategy, and that's what we all need to do. You know, every subsequent revision has to take lesser and lesser time, and you have to have the space that no, it's okay. I would remember it even if it crops up some more detail about it, but majorly, yes, these are the points that I definitely need to know. And also, since he has mentioned. and now you know from now onwards until uh, neet sankeet there are about 3 months which is mm-hmm. what you also approximately had for your revision mm-hmm. before uh, i and i set yes so uh, how would you advise some of the other students who are wanting to appear for neet pg exam how could they use these 3 months for a very effective revision i would say fast revision and multiple revisions um so i would divide it into one and a half month one and a half month chunk okay. and in the first one and a half month i would do my first revision in the next one and a half month i'd break it into one month and then half a month okay. like one month i would try to nudge in one more revision maybe in that revision i'd remove subjects like maybe not revise ccm physiology because these are like stuff that you usually there's nothing to remember it's more or less if you concepts yeah yeah so then just remove that aside and uh then in the next last half chunk only like take the main stuff which is asked regardless of whether you're good at them or not for instance i was like confident with obscenity but i still put it in the last 5 days because i was like something will come that i don't know some number will come that i don't <laughs> remember so let me revise it so then based on whatever not my strengths at the last 5 days based on what is asked 
I put the last five days as off scanning, surgery, micro, pharma and path. These subjects I put because I thought that regardless of what happens, I need to know this. Yes, and, and there were this. there were significant number of questions from, I think, Abhijit and Gaini and uh, yes, pharma as well. I think so. Uh, so that is a strategy that even you could use if you are in a fix on how to plan your revisions, right? And also, Sankeet, let's let's talk about INI set paper per se. Hmm. Uh, I'm I'm sure you've heard from your seniors, from people around you, that these subjects are important. These are not important. So, how much weightage do you really give to these hearsays? And uh, what would be your input on what subjects are like must dos? They should be your strengths. What subjects are you know you you can be just okay with? And what are like the ones that you really need to score into high ranks? So uh, top priority are your second year subjects, that is micro pharma path forensics, along with obscaini in your final year subjects, obscaini yeah. and surgery. Uh, apart from that, everything else comes as uh, intermediate tier. Like and low tier, I would put as uh, CCM, physiology, and um, maybe ENT also. Like they don't ask too many questions. Yes. And uh, I think that's how I would put it. These subjects I'd put way down. And uh, the rest of them are all intermediate. So the top priority should be your second year subjects along with all scanning surgery. So this you have to know. Like medicine, you can literally like leave it also if you want. Like I had to do a medicine revision, two of them in fact, in the last bit, but I didn't have time, so I ended up doing just half of what I had to do. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, now I have path. Let let me just leave it at path. Like like whatever path is there, that will only help me in medicine. So medicine is like, something you can put in the lower tier only. Like along with CCM and. Uh, Great. Okay, and uh, now let's talk about the exam strategy itself. Yes. Uh, so you had an evening session, if I'm right. Okay. So do you want to do a comparative uh, analysis on the morning and the evening session? Anything that you want to say? And what about the various types of questions that uh, you got? Because it was not the routine pattern that usually INI set sticks to. So there were a lot of uh, other pattern questions as well. So any any. Uh, specificities that you want to mention about the paper itself, ma'am. So in the morning paper, what happened in that day was that I immediately waited. I was at the center very early, of course, and uh, when the people came out, I asked them, "Ki kaisa tha? What kind of questions did they ask?" They were like, "There were a lot of previous questions. All of them very short and brief and crisp and sweet." Okay, like literally, my friend told me they showed a picture of keratin pearls and they were like, "Kya kaun sa carcinoma?" And I was like, "Oh my God, wow!" Okay, so in my head, I had mentally prepared for an easy paper at that point of time. I was like, "Okay, chalo, let's go, let's do this." Hmm. And the second I opened the MCQ slot, I was like, "Okay, first question, theek hai, little bit slow, fine." And then I'm looking into this MCQ module and I'm like, "Okay, all of the questions are." This huge and options are also इतने बड़े से and what is happening? It's taking me so much time. I had set up uh, time chunks, so like you have a total of 180 minutes to solve 200 questions. So I was like 135 when the timer reaches from 180 to 135. You should have finished 50 questions. That's barely making it. I thought by around 140 I would have finished uh, 50 questions. So but then when I was looking at the timer, I realized that I am just barely making the chunks as the time progresses, and I'm at literally at that last second, like trying to get all of the questions in. So normally when I do a grand test, I have like around one hour, one and a half hour remaining to like analyze whatever questions are given. But in this, I literally had only 20 minutes at the ending, and to my bad luck, I had marked whatever questions I wanted to review on the paper. I don't trust the mark for review option. Yes, that, because uh, it's 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 not the right uh, thing to do as well. कभी भूल जाओ तो फिर it's all gone. So I literally had written it in a piece of paper, and I was reviewing those questions. And in the last five minutes, the invigilator comes and snatches the paper away, and I'm like, okay, I guess now I'm blindly reviewing. But uh, it was fine. Like in the um, at that point of time, I just thought, okay, even if I don't have time to revise, I will attempt questions. And um, I had this one particular strategy that uh, in the four options, if I'm capable of eliminating even one, okay, then I will look for a slight hunch and mark something. Like there is some inner voice that will tell you if you've attended your postings and stuff that maybe this is the right answer, and then I would mark it. So I literally attempted all 200 of them. Wow. So I think. I Some very very important points have come out here. So uh, plan your people well. I mean, you should always keep a watch on the watch and see that you're hitting the targets correctly because you may need to pace up in the middle um, because the pattern changes. As he says, there were lengthier questions, lengthier options. So don't get disheartened. It happens with toppers as well. You just have to have the knack of handling it. Uh, also, something that he said was, please do not mark a lot of questions for mark for review because uh, they aren't counted. So, um, like he said, that he kept a separate uh, mark 
on a paper and wrote them there and then went back to those questions that is a decent way of doing it yes and then you can change uh, another very important thing he said was that you know even if he is able to rule out one option uh, he would go for it and i think absolutely because the negative marking is not very intensive there is the pluses are are way too beyond if you get it correct so and also something that i really liked listening to him was that he went with his gut instinct you know when you've worked hard all your years and you know you've given a good input you know that your whatever mind is talking to you your instincts usually turn out to be right so don't overthink in the exams i've seen a lot of students who do overthink put a lot of ifs and buts and you know land up doing the simplest things wrong as well yes and how do you uh, manage suppose you get a question which you haven't heard about or let's say was a couple of them tricky at the same mm-hmm. time how did you manage your mindset at that moment like i told myself that uh, let's not overthink the consequences of getting a question wrong yeah. like at that point of time it's easy to catastrophize and be like okay no if i get this wrong my rank will come down and this will happen that will happen at that point of time just focus on the one question and see if you can get it like just think at that point of time so i what i did was that i marked it like regardless of what i thought would be the right answer or not i put a mark then i went ahead i had like double circled those questions where yeah. i like literally feel like i just guessed so then i came back when i had 20 minutes remaining it was not that much time to review the whole paper but it's enough to review those questions where you really had it out and then you go and spend some time to think on it like don't waste too much time thinking of it in that time frame when you're solving the paper because you have only like less than a minute to solve a question so i would give it that much time but if it crosses that then i would mark something and go ahead wonderful i think uh, very very vital tips because i think exam skill is also that we must learn it's not just about content and it's not just about memorizing things having the right exam skill uh, is very very essential because eventually it's those 3 hours that matter right and uh, now sankeet uh, you know you have been a very consistent hard working student and i'm sure that is one of your usps that you've been consistent right from the beginning uh, apart from consistency you know do you think uh, what would you advise your colleagues or juniors or anyone else who's listening out to you uh, that they must have or they must develop a habit of in order to do well in competitive exams apart from consistency i i don't i really don't think there's anything other than consistency like there's no intelligence that goes into this there is no um, it's just the fact like i feel in general the medical career is also rewarding of this is the fact that you have resilience just show up regardless of how bad things are how bad things are going just consistently show up i truly believe that that's the one thing that's rewarded in this career not anything not your intelligence not your whatever so like i used to compare grand tests obviously in our college like everyone's very public about what rank they're getting and all that stuff it's very easy to get disheartened by all of it yes. but like puts you under a lot of pressure yeah. as well and uh it's easy to compare yourself with anyone else but if you were able to do a little bit better than what you did previously that's more than sufficient and just stay consistent like i used to have an app this app is called to date and it tells you the number of hours you study in a day okay so and uh, i it can also you can put in ranges of pages and stuff so what i do with that any pdf that i'm supposed to read i'll have the number of pages set in that and uh, every day it sets you a target you're supposed to print 100 pages or something like that if you don't do it then it pushes the number of pages <laughs> to the next day but if you do it it reduces the number of pages scheduled for the next day so it was like really good to keep my productivity up i mean it's very easy to read close to the exam you have an adrenaline rush and you don't need all of this but the question is how do you put in 8 to 10 hours and stuff before so wow. like be yes. before and i think what he said is uh, you could use an app you could use anything but the idea is to give yourself daily targets and not only give yourself daily targets but actually reward yourself in whatever way you feel for example here the reward was reducing the number of pages and there was a penalty as well so you know that is the entire idea that if you have to stay consistent it it sounds very very cliche that you need to have consistency but how do we ensure that we are consistent it can only happen if you have a daily well defined short targets see ek to bada target hai that i have to do well in the exam i have to complete my course by the end of 3 months or whatever but then these daily targets are i think i i think are his usp as well i think he's ensured that uh, he is pushing throughout yes so um, it is absolutely wonderful to sit beside you sankeet and listen to the strategy and i'm sure people who are listening out to you would also gain a lot they would improvise and they would be able to extract some vital information 
एंड नाउ संकेत वॉट वॉट ब्रांच डू वॉन्ट टू परस्यू बचे मैम आई रियली वॉन्ट टेक ऑफ गाई नी एंड आई हैड क्वाइट लॉर्ड डिस्कशन विद हिम एंड आई एम सो सो हैप्पी दैट ही वॉन्ट्स टू टेक अप ऑब्स इन गाई नी एंड आई थिंक नो मैटर वॉट ब्रांच यू टेक इफ यू हैव लव फॉर दी ब्रांच Uh, you are going to excel in it it's not about clinical paraclinical surgical non surgical medicinal you know uh, you have to have the right reasons to take the branch and i think he really has the love for the branch and he is going to excel in it uh, so we are going to wish him all the very best for a very bright future ahead sanket and may you may you be a very very successful doctor surgeon whatever you per- want to pursue as your uh, future career So all the very best and thank you for making dams a part of your journey. Thank you so uh, much ma'am the pleasure is all mine. Literally it's an honor. No it it's it's absolutely great to sit behind uh, you know besides a very very humble doctor and someone who has a very clarity in in the thought process on how to go about things because as doctors we do need that. We have lot on our mind, lot on our plate. So a clarity of thought keeps us going through right and something motivating that you want to say to people who are listening to you sankeet um like don't let others push you down and most important of all don't let you yourself push yourself down i mean like the narrative is always going to try to make you fail it's up to you to decide ki what you do with the narrative and what you tell yourself that you are going to become so i think um you are, you are the one who tells your story the best that's what i would say that's great that's absolutely great so when you're labeling your own self be careful of what labels you give yourself yes you have to have high standards of yourself and when i'm sure that we're going to work in maintaining those standards so all the very best sankeet it was a pleasure to have you here and best wishes and regards to your parents thank, thank you so much ma'am